Well, the AH-64 module has gone to closed beta testing, which means it's only a couple of weeks away from getting into our grubby little hands. But right now you're wondering, how am I going to map all these buttons? Well, let's take a look at some options. All right, everybody. Well, if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. My name's Casmo, and I did fly H64s, and I've been helping ED out on building this awesome module. I'm really excited. I can't wait for it to get released. And uh, of course, being on the testing team, I've been able to play around with a little bit and kind of get used to how I want to uh, set up my uh, key bindings. And figured I'd just take a little bit of time and run through that with you guys. Now, again, your hardware is probably gonna be different than mine. And of course your uh, taste is gonna be different on how you set things up. But I just really wanted to give an example of a way to do it. Uh, but also just kind of show that, you know, these buttons are not as intimidating as I think people think, you know, you, you see the uh, pictures of the TDAC and of the collective with two different grips. And, uh, you know, the first time I saw it, I, I thought it was going to lay an egg. Like it, it's a lot and I appreciate that. But uh, a lot of this stuff is redundant and some of it's not even really useful in DCS. So we're going to go through and just kind of take a look at what we should be using, what we can use. And I'll show you what I've been using and then you can adjust from there. Now my current setup is uh, a Verpal Mongoose for a throttle. I do have a collective, uh, sort of prototype collective, and I have a uh, VKB Gunfighter 3 Ultimate. Now, of course your setup may be different, and of course some people no! like to use an Xbox controller. You know, whatever you like to do and however it feels comfortable for you. And uh, we're just going to dive right in. Again, I'm just going to show you what I've got to give you an idea of uh, some of the buttons that you will need to have and just some ideas on how to place them. All right, the first control we're going to take a look at is that mongoose throttle and uh, we'll start here on the front side and then work our way to the side. So uh, starting on the far end there, we're going to use that uh, sort of pinky switch there as the image auto tracker. And that's sort of like a point track. We're not going to get too deep in the weeds on what a lot of these things do, but uh, if you can sort of think of it as a point tracker and we'll get more into that when the module is released. Uh, just coming to the left of that as you're looking at it is uh, kind of a three-way switch it's got a up down and then a z-axis push and that's going to be my laser spot tracker uh, because the laser spot tracker has a auto manual and off position so a three-way so i found that that works best next to that is a slider and that's just what i use for my visual zoom and then sliding over to the uh, left as you're looking at it is uh, a four-way switch with a uh, z-axis five uh, fifth position and i use that for my tads field of view so uh, you'll see that on the field of use, uh, on the real TDAC, it's got a four-way uh, for narrow, medium, wide, and zoom. And uh, I've got it mapped those four ways. And then I use that Z-axis push as the store. So you'll see another switch on the TDAC called the store update. Uh, there's really no reason to have the update, so uh, but I just do have the store. And just to be able to zoom in, click that real quick, and it'll store your target for you. Obviously sliding over there, uh, you got your mini stick, and I'm using that as the manual tracker. And uh, it also has a Z-axis push, so I use that as the linear motion compensator, which again, we'll get into more later. I know Wags touched on it on a video, and it's kind of weird. It just kind of takes into account the movement of the target and the movement of the aircraft, but just putting it there on the Z-axis makes it a lot easier to get to. Sliding over to the side, we've got the cursor. Uh, I just use that uh, four-way switch to move the cursor on the MPDs, and uh, th that's a really helpful feature. You can actually do a lot of things on the MPDs with that cursor, and uh, we'll get more into that when the module gets released and be able to play around with it some more, but it's gonna be uh, very important to have that feature, both really in the front and back seat to have that cursor available. And once again, it's got a Z-axis push, and I use that for enter on that cursor. All right, we're going to take a look at the uh, side and sort of back here and we'll go back onto the far left side there. It's got a, uh, I guess another pinky switch you could call it with a, uh, a forward and back dial. And that's right now what I'm using for my FLIR and day TV. And then uh, I've got my uh, polarity uh, set uh, with that Z axis push. So I can switch between FLIR and day TV. On the TDAC, there's a three position switch, but one of those really isn't uh, in use. You just have the day TV and FLIR. It's sort of a legacy from the alpha model. Uh, so just using that forward and back and then just change that polarity with that button that's sort of inside of it there. I have kind of played around with uh, maybe changing that over to where the cursor's at. I just haven't really uh, uh, done too much with it yet. All right, you'll notice I say nothing there. It's because I'm not using the actual throttle as a collective. Uh, now, of course, this may be different for you, but I guess the way I look at this is I, I know there's people that talk about using Xbox controllers and having another controller. 
I guess my point is you don't need to have it on a collective. Um, I don't use the throttle as a collective because when I'm sitting in the front seat, I'm probably not flying. Now that, that may be different for you. Uh, and it, obviously it's different because I have a collective that I can just sort of fall back on if I do want to fly from the front seat. Uh, but I just basically use my verbal as a TDAC, just as a, a, a large clump of buttons and, and knobs and stuff for me to push. So, all right, sliding back over to the right side here, uh, another four way switch uh, with the Z axis. And I'm just using that for FCR field of view. Now, right now, of course, the FCR and the laser spot tracker to go back a, a slide, uh, those are not coming with the early access, but I still wanted to go ahead and map those controls because I know I'm going to be using them. And uh, I'd rather just kind of get it out of the way now and, and get that muscle memory built that those are uh, used for that. But uh, just like the TADS field of view, the FCR has its own field of view. I, I don't know why mechanically they couldn't have just used the same field of view switch. I'm sure there's some sort of good reason that I just can't fathom. Uh, but uh, it does have two field of view switches on a TDAC, so that's just something you've got to plan for. All right, sliding down below that, I've got the site select switch. And really another way of thinking this is your sensor of interest. So this is how you're going to select uh, your TADS, your HMD, your FCR when it eventually comes along, and link, which is a, a linkage between the TADS and the, the FCR. We'll, we'll talk about that here in the future. Uh, but using that as my site select switch, it's a four-way. And then once again, it's got a Z-axis push and I'm using that for slave. So if you've watched any of my other videos or you watch uh, Wags' videos, you understand that the slave button is very important. So if I site select uh, to the TADS and I set up an acquisition source, I wanna be able to hit the slave button and deslave just as quickly. So having it right there is uh, super handy. And then forward to that is my laser you know, second detent. So there's really no reason to have the first detent with the laser. The laser uh, first detent just kind of gives you some, some ranging information whereas the second detent will give you the ranging information, but also is designating. And I just don't find a whole lot of reason to just uh, laze uh, for, for arranging. So just having that second detent will save you some buttons as well. All right, so you can see that there's still quite a few buttons left on the actual Mongoose control stick, not to mention all of the buttons that are available down at the base, uh, which I've used one or two of, but there's still just a ton, especially when you can use that dial and change to a different set of virtual buttons. Uh, but now we'll go ahead and take a look at the VKB Ultimate Gunfighter. And of course, we're using this as my cyclic and uh, a lot less buttons to worry about here. We're going to start at the top with the weapon action switch. So just like in the real aircraft, it's got a, a four way switch. Uh, I'm going to have that set up for uh, gun, missiles and rockets. And then to the left there, I've got that red button. I just use that as the AI clear to fire. So dealing with George, uh, which I guess is me uh, clearing me to fire. And, uh, and over to the right of that is pulling up the AI menu. And of course, Wags will get into the, the George AI uh, component here soon in a video, I'm sure. But I've just found that handy just to kind of bring up that menu. And then I deal with it with the, uh, the keyboard for right now. All right, below that is a symbology select switch, uh, which is really just an up down function. So there's still a couple switches that it can use with that, uh, that particular four way switch. And I believe it also has a Z axis, uh, but I'm just using the up and the down to replicate the symbology switch in the aircraft. Uh, to the left, and uh, one thing I should point out is this, uh, with the VKB Ultimate, you're able to switch out these little mini sticks and put in the four ways, which, which I have done. Uh, and I use that for my trim and hold mode. So just like in the real aircraft, it's got a, a four-way switch to interrupt the force trim and then uh, turn on the hold modes and then turn off the hold modes. That's that four-way switch is what it's gonna do for me there as well. I slide down and I just do this across the board is another four-way switch with the Z-axis uh, there at the, uh, the sort of bottom of the grip. And I use that for my SRS. I've just got that plugged in directly to SRS. And then you've got that little button there for my tail wheel. And then of course the brakes, uh, unless I get pedals that have toe brakes. And then looking to the side, you've got a weapons fire switch, uh, two detents. If you've only got one uh, trigger detent on whatever you're using, you really could just go with uh, making it uh, weapons fire detent two, uh, which really just overrides uh, some some prohibited things. So if the, the weapon systems are in such a way that they're prohibited from firing because of some sort of safety issue, you can override some of those uh, with the second fire detent switch. So if you go ahead and just map that to detent uh, two, then you're not gonna have any problems. Well, I hope this was helpful, just a walkthrough of how I've got it set up. And you can see that a lot of those buttons, again, if you take a look at the TDAC and the mission grip on the collective, uh, there's just a lot of redundancy there. And that's, you know, by design, 
but it's not something that you need to replicate in your own hardware setup. So just wanted to kind of go through these buttons and show them. And of course, once the module is released, we'll do some tutorials and WAGS, of course, is going to put out several videos here in the near future. And you'll be able to see that some of these buttons are just, just flat out. You don't need them. Well, if you thought this video was helpful, I appreciate it. Share it with your friends and uh, continue to watch the channel as we get ready for the Apache release. It's going to be a great day. You guys are going to enjoy it. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for your comments and your support so far. And we'll talk to you guys later. Take care.